welcome to South of Normal Reviews. I'm your host, Michael Soren, coming to you this time to talk about Being the Ricardos over on Amazon Prime. Was in theaters for a hot minute, but it's mainly going to be on Amazon Prime. Put in theaters for awards purposes, I'm pretty sure. Gotta have a release in New York and or LA in order to be considered for Oscars. Fun fact for you. This, this film was written and directed by Aaron Sorkin. He usually does a phenomenal job with the writing. He's getting there with the directing. He does make some mistakes in this movie, in my opinion. It follows his usual quick, zippy, snappy dialogue where everyone's quick-witted and on their toes, ready to strike. He cuts it together in such a way where I, at times I got confused of what's going on because they, they follow this timeline. They jump forward, they jump back, they come current. I, I got lost. I was like, Hold up, man. Where I thought she was having a baby. Now the baby is already here. I thought they were. Uh, what's going on? It was. It was. It, don't get me wrong. The movie was well done, and it, you're gonna enjoy it. But it was just directing was kind of a little messy. Writing was spot on as usual with Sorkin. He he doesn't miss a beat. That guy. It's like he's done it before. Stars uh, Nicole Kidman as Lucille Ball, Javier Bardem as Desi, uh, El Aaliyah Shawkat, Tony Hale pops up, and plop. Plop was in it. I'm sorry, sorry, not for all you Office fans. That's for you. I mean, it was Jake Lacey, not Plop. You can call him Plop. I'm probably gonna refer to him as Plop from here on out. That's for you Office fans. They are all in it. They all do a terrific job. The film is set around uh, the time where Lucy gets outed as a communist. Whether it's true or not, you have to tune in to find out. Most the people who grew up in the time or know anything about Lucille Ball know the answer already, but it's set in that time. She's filming her show. She's being outed as a communist. She's having a baby. She's dealing with the misogynists in Hollywood land and has an infidelity question on her hand that she's trying to figure out and iron out. Tune in to find out, can she save her marriage? Can she save her show? Can she save herself? Can she have a baby? Can she do it all? Can Lucille Ball do it? Mm. Interesting questions, all masterfully written together and put together by Aaron Sorkin. The film, like I said, is quick, it is zippy, it's very, very you gotta, you gotta be there. If you step away for a second, you're gonna be a little lost. So pay attention, folks. Speaking of misogynistic, uh, Nicole Kidman's resemblance of Lucy isn't one I'd say is uh, ideal. You can tell the heavy use of prosthetics to get the Lucille eyes because that's red lipstick, red hair, big eyes. That was Lucy. Um, you kind of wonder why, because Javier Bardem, they didn't do anything to make him look like Desi. It was just like the whole time I was like, that's not what I remember Desi looking like in the few episodes of Lucy I've seen. So you got to wonder, well, why not just let Nicole Kidman not have all this crazy makeup and prosthetics on and it kind of deterred from her wonderful performance but you can definitely tell that they put that stuff on maybe she wanted it i don't know but it was it was a bit much and it kind of took away from it because you it wasn't 100 it wasn't lucy it wasn't nicole kidman who was it but both her and Bardem do justice to Lucy and Desi because they don't try to imitate. They don't try to like be them in like playing the role. Like they watch an episode of Lucy and be like, okay, that's what I'm gonna act like. They go in and find like the essence of Lucy, the essence of Desi and their aura, what makes them them and they took bits and pieces and they accentuated it and put it on screen and it comes across beautifully as two people who are control freaks coming together, butting heads, loving each other, hating each other, being wildly successful in their own separate lives and together. So it was, the two nail it, the two are great. They keep you riveted the whole time. Even though Sorkin's dialogue and cuts kind of zip around, the movie was still great. I mean, their acting choices were exemplified by the over-the-top disgruntledness of the fellow, the side characters, the producer, the, uh, the writers, the co-stars. They all are down, and Lucy is up trying to 
be successful, trying to be the best, stepping on everyone's toes, get there, and it's portrayed beautifully. I mean, J.K. Simmons, J.K. Simmons steals scenes, any scene he's in, playing um, a Will Farley or Fred from the show, and I Love Lucy. Uh, he nails his character. That man is just on top of it right now. And everything he's in, he's just right, right perfect. Still, just making the character his own, making it what it needs to be, being perfect for the film. And he, he's great in it. And it's, it makes me wonder, on the set, when you got the stars doing their thing, doing very well, and then the side guy comes in and is just like, mm, I'm better, how it goes across, like how does that come across? to them like is there feuds is there fights is there just all the different drama that can take away from the overall film because of the pettiness i mean it doesn't happen in this case <clears throat> thankfully but it just makes you think does that happen i'm sure it does we read stories about stuff like this all the time about feuds and stuff on set creative differences as they say I'm just curious if it happens and what happened. Like, what's the real story behind it? What, like, set life is like? Sorkin makes some different choices with how he portrays the story. Like, he goes into this mockumentary format where he interviews actors playing the writers and the producer in their older age, talking about Lucy and Desi. But it didn't really add to it. It was just like, okay, because it starts off that way and you're like, oh, we have a mockumentary on our hand and then boom, it goes right into the real life. But it just, it didn't seem needed. It seemed like Sorkin was trying too hard to, with something, just trying too hard. But then on the flip side of that, when he does the shots of like Lucy, like blocking a scene in her mind and imagining what's gonna be, those things are so beautifully done. It adds so much depth to this film that you're, you're just like, yes, that was great. I needed that. I didn't even know I needed that. Thank you. Just perfect example of show don't tell. And that's, that's the writer in him. That's the great writer in him is the show don't tell mindset. Overall, this film is quick for 125 minutes. I, I keep saying it, I needed to take some breaths to figure out what was going on as I felt I was running a sprint trying to keep up. Uh, it could be just my limitations. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm not alone, but it was, it didn't hurt the film. It was just, it kind of made it more exciting in a way. The performances behind the film carry it. They make it, be make it better. They help Aaron out in his uh, limitations as a director, but maybe he's a good enough director to get these performances out of people. Maybe I'm, throwing shoes at something that I'm not supposed to throw shoes at, folks. Because I'm, I'm sure taking the larger-than-life Lucille Ball and trying to break her down into 125 minutes and show more than just the goofy, zany, physical comedy of what Lucy was famous for and add that darker, real-life, gritty side was no easy feat, but it is beautifully done in this 125-minute um, film available on Amazon Prime there. So check it out. You're going to like being the Ricardos. I know there's some controversy behind it. I don't remember why, but it's great. You're going to enjoy it. Even if you're not a Lucy fan, even if you didn't grow up with Lucy, the film is worth it. I'm your host, Michael Soren, for South of Normal Reviews. Next time, we're going to be going back to Marvel for Shang-Chi, The Legend of the Ten Rings. Thank you, guys. See you next time. Subscribe somewhere. Um, again, thank you for watching. You've been great. Till next time.